Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Study in Asia JUCO 2020 presentation. This presentation will briefly introduce universities and admission requirements for the Philippines, Japan, Korea, Singapore, and Hong Kong. Um, I'm Ms. Tao, and I'll be walking you through this this evening. So why study in Asia? Well, ISM students choose to apply to Asian universities because it might be close to home or family. Um, top universities provide degree programs and English instruction. Uh, universities in the region have great international reputations and connections. And the costs of going to school here are reasonable. Here in the Philippines, we have some excellent institutions that ISM students apply to. It is a testament to the wonderful education you can receive here in our host country. I would say the most popular university amongst our students to apply to would be Ateneo de Manila. Um, last year, the third highest number of matriculation students was at Ateneo. It's been that way for two years in a row, actually. If you'd like to apply to Filipino universities, there are different pathways for partial IB students and IB diploma students. For partial IB students, they will take the university entrance exams in order to seek admission. For IB diploma students, they usually apply with their IB predicted scores. These pathways have different deadlines, so students should make sure when those different deadlines occur. Tuition and scholarship dead deadlines are also different. Um, so you also have to make sure that you make that deadline if you're interested um, in those scholarships. Filipino universities can generously fund up to full tuition funding or approximately 150,000 pesos a year. So how do you prepare to apply to Filipino universities? Well, right now you can meet with your counselor to talk about what to expect, um, how to prepare, and around May 2021, you can ask the high school staff for a soft copy of upcoming Filipino University deadlines and test dates. Once you're ready to apply, make sure to prepare all your documents, maintain communication with uh, the high school counseling staff about your school documents and when they need to be sent. Um, and we may ask you for any sort of um, recommendation letters that you need, transcripts that you need, or predicted grades. Uh, universities here will also ask you to possibly write a personal statement or a personal essay. If you are going the university admissions exam route for par partial IB students, um, then you will need to make sure that you take the exam on time um, and you may also be asked to write a personal essay. So it just depends on the university, but you can begin to do your research about requirements now. The next thing I'd like to talk about is Japanese universities. In 2014, a global universities program was launched by the government to enhance student competitiveness and leadership in an increasingly globalized world. Most of these advertised global university programs were English taught degree programs, and a selection of universities listed in this slide were chosen for promotion. Japanese universities are now encouraged to advertise English taught programs in addition to their Japanese degree programs. At ISM, the most popular universities students apply to are the following. As you can see, most of them are private universities on the top, and on the bottom, um, a lot of them are national universities. So some of the big ones are Kyoto, Tokyo, and Nagoya. Generally speaking, there is no centralized system in order to apply to Japanese universities. You apply directly to the universities themselves. And in order to be successful in the Japanese university admissions process is to do your research and start the process early. 
Japanese university admission information changes every year, and one university may have different application deadlines for different majors. So it is important that you are on top of this information before application season starts. A lot of it is going to be lots of reading and lots of information to be digested about how to apply to schools. Here is an example of application periods that might happen throughout a semester for a student. So when these, the class of 2021 turns, or I'm sorry, the class of 2022 turns into seniors, so that's next academic year, um, application periods will start from as early as October, as you can see for Waseda's S School of Political Science and Economics, SPSE. Um, that's one of the earliest deadlines that starts. And then you can notice that there are different rounds for the different universities too. So there's a first round, second round. KO Pearls program has a third round. Um, most of our students find the most success during the first round of applications. So we tend to see higher admission rates for ISM um, during the first application round. So counselors will tend to recommend that students um, and encourage students to apply for the first round. But if they're not able to make that round, of course we want students to put their best foot forward. So then we would recommend the second round. So it's all up to a student's comfort levels and you know preparedness and also their interest in the school. Here is an example of admission requirements. So as you can see, Japanese programs start in April or just September, and they are located all on the left column, while English programs are located on the right column. And English programs start um, in September, very similarly to um, an ISM academic year. Uh, they will base entrance requirements off of different things. So as you can tell for the Japanese degree program, they require an entrance exam and an interview. Your degree is going to be mainly in Japanese. You'll have to provide evidence of a full IB diploma, um, maybe an SAT, a TOEFL as well, um, and then they will ask you for maybe additional information from those requirements. For English-based programs, you'll see that it might be a little more holistic because they ask you for a variety of application essays, they'll ask for recommendation letters, um, your English language abilities must be strong, so they will be um, encouraged to take the TOEFL as um, evidence of that. However, if, if students don't take the TOEFL or IELTS, um, they may also be able to submit the IB English A um, course as an exemption to the TOEFL. So if you score well in your IB English A course, then you don't have to take the TOEFL or IELTS. It varies from university to university though, so you have to double check to see if the university will allow that. Next is an overview of the application process. So once you've determined the application period or round that you're gonna go for, um, you will have to go through a series of screenings. So the first screening is usually your application materials. The second screening is an interview process that you go through. And then finally, uh, you will have to say yes to a university that you're admitted to by April or May. Uh, that's when enrollment decisions start to come out. So that's the basic timeline. Um, students who do get invited into interviews, um, we do have uh, different types of resources from students in the past that we've worked with um, that would prepare them for interviews. So if any of you guys are interested in that, 
um, you can let me, Miss Tao, know about it and we can help walk you through that interview process. So what are the next steps? If you want to apply to Japan, um, I recommend obviously having a conversation with your counselor about it. Discuss the type of programs you might be interested in applying to. And um, the student and the counselor will have different roles that they're going to play throughout the admissions process. So on the left hand side, you can see that the student will have to fill out uh, transcript request forms because Japanese universities typically like materials to be in paper form still. So you'll have to fill out a request form. You'll have to fill out application forms for the university. Uh, there are application fees that are involved and you'll need to ask your teachers for recommendation letters. The most time consuming part of a student's application is the, uh, is the essay. So um, each university and maybe even each program that you apply to has a different essay that you'll need to write about. So it's important to prepare early for the different types of essays that you might have. For the ISM counselor, um, we just need to know when and which application period you're going to apply to. Once you fill out the request form for paper documents, we will organize and provide all of those different documents with stamps and seals. Um, our high school counseling staff work really hard to make sure everything looks perfect and ready to go. Um, and then we'll also provide letters of recommendation. Um, our high school counseling staff also helps prepare, stamp, and seal those. Um, and then the counselor can help you with your essay editing. Um, again, if you have any drafts of essays and such, please let your counselor know so that they can help you with it. So you want to apply to Japan. Well, we will finish here with some web pages to get you started on your search. Um, some of these are government sponsored um, and well, actually most of them are government sponsored or I highly recommend just going to individual university websites to get more detailed information. The next country we're going to talk about um, is Korea, and we're going to talk about Korean universities. Korean universities are known for their world rankings. Um, a lot of them range in the top 100 of the world. Uh, the reason why I start off with talking about rankings in South Korea is because we know that uh, if students are interested in Korea and wish to potentially have a job there afterwards, rankings and name recognition of universities will matter to whatever companies they are applying to later on. So we tend to see that ISM students go for some of these top ranked schools in the country because of that sort of cultural value attached to name recognition um, in the country. In Korea, March is typically the start of a school year. There is a special early admission period and a regular admission period. ISM students tend to aim for the special early admission. The benefits to early are that you can apply to six universities rather than three. They will also evaluate your application based on things like the essay and interview, and students will prepare their applications around July and August after graduation. So when the seniors graduate in June 2022, they will start preparing for their applications July 2022 and even into August. Um, our high school counseling staff are available over the summer to help students collect and prepare documents for university admissions, um, so students won't have to worry too much about that. 
If you are a 3 to 11 year overseas Korean student, you have special admission circumstances that you should be aware of. Now, when I mean 3 to 11 year overseas Koreans, I mean that you have spent um, 3 to 11 years outside of South Korea and you have a South Korean um, citizenship or Korean passport. So some of these special admission circumstances you need to be aware of as a 3 to 11 year overseas Korean student are that you are up against a 2% quota at these universities. So for example, if you're going to apply to Sogang University, there are 32 spots for 3 to 11 year overseas Korean students out of 1640 um, seats. So that means you're going up against a pretty competitive pool um, of other students who have also lived overseas. You will be evaluated holistically or through a written exam. So it depends on the university, but some universities will look at it very holistically. Some may also ask you to do a written exam. Some universities will also use different varieties of admissions, as you can see here. So Korea University's admission will look different from Sogang's, um, depending on the school. So if you're looking at the School of Liberal Arts, it's going to be a lot of document screening. If you're looking at natural science, they're going to ask you for document screening and math and an interview. So from different university perspectives, they will look at different things. If you are a 12 year overseas Korean student or you are an international passport holder, you have special admission circumstances that you should also be aware of. The definition of a 12 year uh, overseas Korean student is a student who has completed all 12 years of pre-university education overseas or the equivalent to it. For international students, that means you are an applicant where both of your parents have non-Korean nationality. So um, yeah, they're very specific in their terms of how you might receive eligibility as an international student. The nice part about um, either being a 12 plus year overseas Korean or international student is that you are granted privileges. Um, and by privileges, I mean there is no quote at Korean universities for you. So they can accept as many of you as they want. Um, you may apply in early, as early as September of your senior year or March of your senior year. Um, so a student who graduates in May 2022 can apply to six programs for September 2022 entry and six programs for March 2023 entry. So that's a lot of opportunities for you to get into a Korean university because you can apply twice throughout the year um, and you'll be able to apply for different start dates as well. So there's a lot of privilege going on with the 12 year overseas Koreans. How do Korean universities evaluate applications? Um, well, they'll tend to look at test scores, um, possibly proficiency in Korean, um, transcripts, personal statements, recommendation letters. Um, but we would say that the most important piece out of all of these would be your excellent academic performance, so your transcripts or grade reports. This is what a strong student profile will look like. A high GPA, high scores on testing, good language scores as well, and participation in activities. For less competitive student, 
Um, it's going to be low numbers, low scores, and limited participation in activities. If you have any questions on how to prepare for Korean universities, please let your counselor know. Um, otherwise, um, I would say you can begin your research on Korean universities at their individual websites because each university will have their own admissions criteria. The next country we're going to head over to is Singapore. Singapore is a popular destination because it provides students a safe environment to learn. Um, universities have strong reputations there. Most people speak English, um, so it's easy to adjust to life there. And there are international opportunities for work after graduation. Singapore has three different types of universities. The most popular universities for ISM students are the National University Singapore, National Technological University, um, Singapore Management University, and Yale NUS. Um, the reason why it is competitive to apply to Singapore universities is because the international student population is capped at 15%. So that's why when we talk to students about Singaporean admissions, we want to make sure that students know that they're getting into a pool that is highly competitive. Um, Yale and US is the only college um, that caps its international student population at 50%. So the admission requirements there tend to use a more holistic American admissions approach. Otherwise, Singaporean universities, they tend to have very straightforward requirements um, and they're all readily publicly listed on their websites. Here are some general admission information about Singapore universities. As you can see, the one thing that pops out right away is because the international student population is capped at 15%, um, they will expect applicants to typically have the IB diploma, the full IB diploma. Um, so IB diploma scores and their predicted grades are important. Um, their admission rate is, is low for international students um, and their application periods tend to be from October to March. Here are some requirements by the most popular universities there that our students apply to. And here are some of the cost and fees. So international students are paying an average of about 25,000 Ks. If you're studying medicine, it can go up to even higher, 50 to 60,000 Ks. For Singaporean residents, um, it's a little different, 12,000 K, and Singaporeans also have education grants that are available to them. Here are some admission tips and next steps. Do your research on individual college websites because what happens is you will be applying directly to colleges through their own websites. Um, you need to rank the courses in order of preference. So if you're thinking about psychology or um, biology, you'll need to rank which one you'd rather, you know, be considered first or second. Um, pay attention to any of the deadlines. You can apply to these universities with predicted grades. Um, and then for some schools, they may ask you for test scores, the TOEFL or the SAT. Um, and generally speaking, essays and recommendation letters are not required. So it really is going to be very score based in terms of evaluation.
Speak to your counselor if you wish to apply to Singapore. Um, check out websites, and now you, nowadays universities are preparing a lot of online webinars and info sessions, so make sure you attend them so that you know um, what the next steps would be. And finally for this presentation is Hong Kong. So we're gonna fly over to Hong Kong. And um, why do students pick Hong Kong universities to apply to? Well, Hong Kong was a place that, or is a place um, that is very modern, it's dynamic, it's got an international population, it has world-class institutions. Um, all of the universities have English language degree programs with an opportunity to learn Mandarin. Um, and there's a real commitment to international education with government support attached to it. So Hong Kong has welcomed international students for decades. Here are some of the most popular universities ISM students apply to. And here is some general information about admissions for Hong Kong. Um, most universities are going to require an IB diploma um, for admission consideration. Keep in mind that once you are admitted into a Hong Kong university, you'll only have two weeks to decide whether or not you'd like to save your seat. This is normal for all Hong Kong universities. If you do not wish to save your seat, you will need to pay a deposit. I'm sorry, if you do wish to save your seat, you will need to pay a deposit. If you don't wish to save your seat, they will not keep your seat for later on. You have to decide that within two weeks. For example, if you've gotten into your safety school in Hong Kong, but you're still waiting on your REACH school to get back to you about admissions, you'll need to decide if you're going to pay the safety school's deposit to save your seat while waiting on your REACH school's admission decision. If you end up getting into your REACH school, you will not receive a refund from your safety school if you decide to go to your REACH school. So you will have to be paying multiple deposits if you decide to wait on admissions decisions. Um, this way you'll need to decide if the financial benefits um, are there for depositing first or not. Um, most students will decide to deposit if it's a school that they're really interested in. Um, the deposit fees are not as big as I would say deposit fees are in the US or in Canada per se. So you'll just have to make sure you do your research on how much money you might be potentially spending in terms of deposit fees if a Hong Kong university is one of your top choices. Here's a snapshot of university admission requirements for different universities that are popular with ISM students. These are their average IB scores, and some may require testing. Here's a snapshot of some more universities. It seems like with all six of these universities, you'll notice that IB Diploma makes you a more competitive student, although they do have options for students to apply as a high school, uh, an American high school diploma student. So that might be a partial IB student who has ACT or SAT scores. This is the average Hong Kong tuition fees. And this is how ISM will support you in the process for Hong Kong universities. We'll send your documents. Nowadays, Hong Kong universities accept them electronically. So a lot of these will be submitted electronically. 
um, and we will ask you to do your research um, early as to which forms we'll need to submit because we need at least three weeks to process them. All right, and so that concludes our five countries in Asia that students tend to apply to. Um, again, my name is Ms. Tao. Thank you so much for tuning in and being patient with all five different countries and their various requirements. If you have questions, please post them through the Google form and we will get back to you very soon. Thank you so much for attending.